Welcome back to another tutorial video here where today we're going to be taking a look at the process of adding to a textured prompt the ability for users to customize that prompt in engine. Okay, we're going to be giving the users the ability to add a custom paint job to their prompt, making it something that is then uh, unique. So this can be done to anything. It can be done to armor or weapons. It can be done to any prompt that you can have in your game. Uh, for the process of this example, or for the uh, purpose of this example, we're going to be using this walkie-talkie that was created in a previous tutorial. I have all of my layers and all of the uh, different configurations here that make this thing look the way it does. And what I want to do now is I want to add something that is going to give me a little bit of a uh, kind of spray painted look or like somebody had wiped a brush across this object. Now, where I point point this effect or put this effect in my uh, mesh here is going to be rather important. And the reason for that is that I need to make sure that what I am doing here happens at the right area. So I don't want this to be something that was painted um, above or on the dirt and dust, though that is absolutely something I could do. It is going to look a little bit better if we put it in between all of the texturing of this object and the dirt and dust. So if I turn the dirt and dust off, it's going to happen here, which is just kind of the regular wear and tear on this object that you would get in the real world. And we want to kind of put it before the dust gets applied. So that's where in this system I would like this to go. To do that, I'm going to add a paint layer here. And what I want to do with this paint layer, I'm going to go first clear my alpha and let's go and find an alpha that we can use that's going to look like a giant brush stroke. Now, there are kind of a bunch of these things already that uh, exist in the software here that we can go and use. I've got this one here. This is called Brush Dirty. And you can see it kind of gives me this uh, really rather interesting smudge effect here that I can go and paint on this. And again, it gives you that kind of effect of like a little bit of a, a roller coming across your object. Um, and that's kind of what I'm after here. Here's another one. This just looks like a big swipe. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do this in 3D here in a couple of places. Just go in and swipe this on like so. Now it is kind of going over the screen a little bit. It is covering my buttons a little bit, which is okay. I'm going to be okay with that. We're going to go and rename this Paint Customs. And uh, I wouldn't hate if it got erased from the buttons a little bit so that we could still read what they say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my eraser. And here in the eraser, I'm going to want to go and find a little bit of a uh, broken type of dirty looking uh, brush here that I can go in. Let's do an angle jitter on this and let's do a little bit of a size jitter and a position jitter. And the idea is that I just want to kind of scuff this off off the buttons a little bit um, like it was scraped off so that we can still read them in the way that they're supposed to appear. So that is almost it. Um, this in this paint layer here, if I go to my materials, we can go and turn off everything that's here. Um, what we really want to do is we really just want to get a mask out of this and I'll show you what I'm going to do to uh, accomplish that. I'm going to create a fill layer and I'm going to put that fill layer underneath the paint customs. And I'm just going to drop all of this down and make it black. So the idea here is that we get a black and white mask. We're only going to be looking at this in the base color so that you can see it. And this is kind of what we want. We want to make sure that we are going to get the ability to customize this thing in blacks and whites. Now I'm going to go into my dirt layer in the base color and set that to be a multiply. And I'm going to go into my dust and change that to be a multiply as well. And then I'm also going to go in with those layers and turn their opacities back up. Now this is in effect destroying what I had done with the uh, the paint job, but since those textures are already exported, the only thing that I'm really interested in at this point in time is this mask. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and save this texture out as a separate resource. So I'm going to go and spit this thing out. Um, in terms of the templates here, I don't really care what it does. I'm just going to go and throw this on my desktop for the time being. And I'll show you kind of why this is a really good thing that we can do. 
Okay, so I'm going to go and export this. Uh, I don't really care what it exports here. The only one I'm really interested in is the base color. So we can go and turn off all of these other ones and spit that out. Now, I'm going to go into Photoshop here where we are going to close what we had open already. And I'm going to open up some of the textures for this asset so that we can go and take a look at them in terms of what they would do and what they would look like in engine, how we would set this up. So first, I'm going to open up the base color here for this walkie talkie that was painted. So here we have it here. There's no paint job on this. You can see this is a slightly different one that was done in the uh, previous video uh, in that there's there's no colors on this. This is all now kind of grayscale. And that's kind of something I would want to do if giving customizations. I wouldn't want to have really big, bright colored buttons. The other thing that I'm going to bring into Photoshop here to set this up in a way that you can see it um, is going to be that base color that I just created. And so what that's going to do here, it is here. I'm going to control A and control C. I'm going to copy this. Now, I may actually want to go into the levels and bring the whites up in here a little bit stronger. Uh, there just wasn't a lot of white in here. So I'm going to do that. And then we're going to copy this. And then let me show you how you would set this up to create custom paint jobs in the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer in Photoshop. This again would be done in engine using another texture image that we would then bring in. And then I would go and set a layer mask to this or in the engine, multiply it against the image that I have selected, which would be this image here. So with that in the engine here, we're going to turn off the visibility of that. What I could do is I can now actually put anything I want as this texture and we will get that as a custom uh, paint job on this object. So for instance, um, the, uh, the large number of American um, gamers makes using the American flag a pretty prominent one. So uh, if I were to go and paste the American flag into here, I'm going to drop it down a layer, preserve the mask, and I can go and take this and I can go and scale it up. Not sure how that worked. Let's go back in here, transform, and I'll scale this up. This is having really bad performance at the moment here. Photoshop is not doing what it should be doing. But you can kind of see how this would work if we were to have brought in an image like this in order to create this custom walkie talkie here, I could even go and rotate this one full 90 degree tilt and we can put it kind of on the front of this object. Now, the nice thing about this is that this image has transparency on it. And that means that it doesn't really matter uh, where this thing is placed. Um, it's actually rotating the mask here as well, which is not what I wanted. That's why this is acting so screwy. There. Yeah, it's manipulating the mask here as well. Let's unlink that. There we go. So now you get the idea. It'll go in and it'll apply this thing to where that paint job is, giving us the ability to kind of go and give any kind of effect we want on here. So, and again, it's not it's not masking out or it's not blocking out our ability to read any of the system. We'll just hit enter here and accept that like that. So you can see that it's not actually blocking out any of our system here. I can still read what the buttons say. Um, and it's using that mask that has all that really nice you know, uh, texturing material in here, um, which is really, really good. The other thing we could do is just give this a flat color. So maybe we want to give our users the ability to make this orange. And so I can go in and do that. And again, in an engine, we would be using a uh, RGB value here. So we can actually go and adjust any color we want to be on that walkie talkie. And again, it's going to be using everything that's there, just applying that mask directly to it. 
And so this gives us a really, really nice uh, ability here to provide our users with customizations by just having an additional black and white image that we can go and tuck that into our um, we can go and tuck that into our, our actual alpha channel of our image of our base color, giving us the ability to give the user the ability to have this. Now, I would be careful with saving this here because I've gone and made changes to my layers, but this will give us now something that in engine we can use to adjust, you know, just how customized this little guy is. Um, the ability to put users flags on here, the ability to put just custom materials, even to make this a gold shiny object if we wanted to have kind of a, a gold overlay on top of here. It would give us the ability to do that. And so that is how we would set this up. In a later video, I will show you how to then apply this in engine and make it so that these customs or these customizations can be applied in Unreal 4. Until then, we'll talk next time.